Okay guys, this is Bender Beer Man and I am back again to uh, rebuild another inch and a half valve. Hopefully this time you'll be able to see, hear, all of that. I've set up another camera right here as you can tell and I'm using my other camera for my face. If it sounds weird at different points it's because I'm having to use two different mics for the two different cameras because I'm not that good at editing stuff together. So at one point it'll be from this camera and the other point will be from this camera and yeah, two different mics. So yeah, this is a Tassellini inch and a half butterfly valve and we're going to rebuild this real quick. So I like to start by putting it in the vise. There is a specialty um, tool that you can get for stretching and removing, extracting the um, valve seat. Um, I don't happen to have that tool. This is the way I have done it. I've used that tool a couple times, but not in years. So I'm going to try to borrow one uh, from someone and give it a try and uh, make another video about that. So I'm just pulling the handle off. This uses a five millimeter um, Allen. We just put that on the side. This one, you can actually tell where it was in the brewery. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, yeah, valve number 38, kettle CIP hose. So I've already gone through and cracked loose all of the hex bolts that hold the body together. I like to use two towels, put that one over there. This towel we're going to go ahead and lay down to protect my nice pretty table and to also you know, protect the valve itself and try to keep it cleaner. So we're going to pull this part. You hear a little bit of squeaking going on and those are some dry threads. Flip it over. Alright, you ready? I have not pulled this apart. Oh, this one's actually in pretty good condition. Look at that. That's nice and clean. There's only some discoloration there. No gunk down in the uh, channel or anything. Actually, the interior looks in beautiful condition. The flanges, it's always a good idea to do a full inspection of the flanges. Make sure that they, uh, they're they going to seat and seal properly. This one's got a couple nicks. These take a lot of abuse because these uh, get attached to well all the machinery and hoses and everything and hoses get dropped all the time so these these hit first because they're the heavy end. Alright, we're gonna pull the little slide sleeves off. I like to just cut off the old ones. Just uh you know razor knife. Now don't cut down deep enough that you're going to cut the steel, scratch it or anything and mar it up. Now it's time to do an inspection of the butterfly itself. I like to wipe them off real good. And as you can see, I'm going to do, look at the edges, run your fingers along and make sure there's no sharp edges or anything like that that will cut the new seal. Make sure there's no scratches that will allow a pathway through. This is in really good condition so we're gonna call that good. Now these we're gonna go ahead and do a clean on but um, I'm going to do a PBW soak and get this cleaned up a little bit nicer after. Might hit it with a brush. Oh, hey, we might not need to hit that soak. Always use a stainless steel or brass brush on stainless. Plastic works too, but I don't find that plastic has enough, like, grit to it. 
Don't use a regular steel brush because it can actually impart steel into the stainless in the scratches and cause it to rust. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna need the uh, PPW soak on this one. Which is fine, I would have done that off camera anyway. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Now take your rag, clean it out. Make sure you get anything out of there. This is a good time to take it and rinse it off as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go rinse this off before I do it and I'll cut that out. I'll be right back. And I'm back, did you miss me? <laughs> yeah. Funny, I know. So I went ahead and rinsed these off. I did hit it with a little bit of soap just to make sure, but honestly, it's in really good condition. So we're gonna hit it with a rag, get it nice and dry. Make sure to get down in that groove and try to get as much of the water out as you can. You can if you've got time, you don't need it. Do a full PBW soak, let it sit, pull it out, clean it, scrub it, set it down, let it dry, just let it do its thing. Alright, I like to check before I start putting them back together the back side and you can see which side was top before. I like to keep it that way, it doesn't really matter. You can turn them either direction, but, you know, it's a, it's just a thing. So I'm going to be using Petrogel. It is a sterile lubricant, um, food grade, silicone based. And I use these, uh, they're for taking samples in labs. They're um, like a sterile applicator kind of thing. It's a Q-tip that uses a wood shaft instead of cardboard. I just like to roll a little bit. I like to hit the insides of where the shaft goes. Just kind of roll it in there. Oh, yeah, they don't usually fall apart like that. Set that aside. And I like to take a little more grease and run it along the inside channel. This just helps the valve seeds get set properly. It also helps with a, a little bit of an extra seal. Wow, I'm having bad luck with these today. I normally don't have that many issues with these. Right along the inside of the other one. Now, we're basically done with this. I'm going to leave that there, though. This is where that specialty tool comes in that I don't have. I, like I said, I've used it a couple times. It's an extractor, and it um, stretches this out so that you can get this fit in. What I do is I take it, take this end, the long end, and I run it on the inside to there. And I put it in the vise. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. And I take this is a little brass seal thing. You can use a, a small screw, a flathead screwdriver, or anything like that. And you put it on here. Can you see that? And just kind of stick it, let's do it from this side, so you can, might be able to see a little bit better. So you take it, you stick it in here, you get it levered up, 
and just pull up and slide the valve seat over and set it and roll it down and kind of work it back and forth and let it get set into its position. And you can remove that, bring it back over, put your little plastic slidey bits on. I'm sure they have a proper name. Bushing is my guess. It is sort of a bushing. Press it in. This is where that lubricant that we just put in helps get it into place. I'm going to take our other side of our valve body, stick it in. Everything's looking pretty good. Take, start our Allen bolts. And you can do this with the smaller Allen wrenches. I prefer these T handles because it gives you a lot more torque. That and it's got the other side where you can get a lot more torque on it if you need. So I like to do it kind of like a car wheel where I don't do it all on one. I like to turn it around, move it. And this way I feel like it helps set the seal in its bed. And it helps get everything to where it needs to be for good operation. And when you rebuild these, you don't you don't want to rebuild them all the time. So <laughs> um, this is a good time to talk about what's called galling. Um, stainless on stainless can goober itself together. It looks like it's melting together. It can weld itself together, to be honest, and can be a real pain in the butt. Um, so a lot of people use a um, anti-seize on the threads of their um, hex nuts on these. I don't tend to do it. It's a... Uh, I don't have as much problems with them, but it's up to you. You could do it. You could not do it. My issue with, with doing it is these go on a lot of our machines, vibrate a lot, pumps vibrate a lot, and I've had these bolts back out. So, that's why I don't do it. If you want to do it, go right ahead. So now that I've got it tight by hand, we're going to put it back in the vise. Where we're going to give it the last little torque. Make sure we've got all the bolts tightened down to where they want to be. Now we're going to take the handle I'm going to put it back on work its way down make sure you can see what I'm doing you can see what I'm doing right? Get it tight. You don't need to over tighten the handle. You just need to get it where it's not going to come off. Now, you want to test it. So I'm going to turn it both ways, get it to lock into place both ways. And since this is a Tassellini and it doesn't have the orientation plate on it, you can take it all the way around. And I like to roll it around a couple times. Then do an inspection of the valve, the brand new valve seat that we just put in. Make sure that it didn't cut, pinch, or harm it in any kind of way. I think it feel like this looks pretty good. And this girl is ready for service again.
So, please uh, like and subscribe, or like and subscribe, um, and uh, send me any questions you've got. Uh, the next video will probably be on pumps, but who knows. <laughs> Alright, have a good day. Cheers.